Hi, everybody, and welcome to my basement. Why paint in the basement? Well, I can make a mess down here, and I don't have to worry too much about cleaning it up, which is nice. Oh, and the hair? Uh, probably like you, I've experienced some difficulties during this pandemic of getting a haircut. So this is what happened. But it works because I'm doing a Bob Ross painting today with you. So hopefully you'll join along with me and make a painting. Uh, so grab your paints, your brushes, a piece of paper, canvas, wood, cardboard, anything you have will work. If you don't have paints and brushes available, use a crayon or use markers. Uh, anything color would work well, any chalk, whatever you have. I'm hoping that you'll join me, relax a little bit, relieve some stress uh, from this, this unprecedented situation that we're in, and we'll have some fun painting. So join me. Let's experience the joy of painting. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is get my paints ready, and we are going to use just five colors of paint. The three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, black, and white. We know from color theory that all colors are made from those three colors. And I'm going to prove that to you and show you that you can do a complete painting with just these five colors. Okay, so we're going to begin by wetting the entire paper. Wetting the paper prepares it to receive the paint. Uh, but most importantly slows down the drying and allows us to mix the paints right on the paper. So just a light coat of water over the entire paper before we start clear water. Bob Ross would have used liquid white to pre uh, soak his paper and to pre treat his paper. Okay. And again, quickly, we're going to start with our palette. I'm going to mix some blue, a tiny bit of white, and a little bit of red. The red darkens it slightly and just changes the color a little bit. To me, makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, and I'm going to load the brush up with lots of this color. And we're going to go ahead and not be shy and start spreading it on the paper. So more of this color, keep the brush wet, a little more red in there, just a little. And if we want this color darker or lighter, we can go ahead and blend that right on the paper. A little bit more, more water. Go ahead and get a little lighter as we go down the paper. And I like these color variations in the sky. I don't want my sky to be just one solid color. Okay, and I'm going to keep this. I'm going to wet the paper again. And I'm going to add a little color moodiness. Make this look like dawn or early morning maybe. By putting some red and some white in the center of our picture. Okay, and because that's wet, we'll be able to blend this out. And keep it moving. Once you get it the way you like it, my recommendation is to leave it alone. All right, and then we're gonna go down to the bottom and put our similar colors down here at the bottom. It's going to represent water for us. So I have my blue, the white in there, tiny little dash of red. And get the paint on the paper. Wet the brush. And blend it in. Not a bad start to our morning island painting. 
All right, next. I'm gonna take the same brush and make another light blue, slightly darker than what I had there. And a little bit more red. So similar colors, slightly different proportion. Because of what the atmosphere does to the light as it gets close to the horizon, filters out certain colors, leaves other colors. This is why we get these sunset colors and makes most mountains appear purple in the background. So I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna leave these pretty light. You definitely want it to show up. From the background and roughly I'm gonna put in a row of trees here. We want the edge to appear kind of light and rough and that's gonna represent our trees off into the distance. So you might even make some stick up like so. Let the brush make the marks for you. Don't try to draw with the brush. It took me a long time to learn that painting. I learned to kind of take the shape of the brush that I want to make on the paper rather than trying to draw with the brush. Okay, and you saw me, I pulled that straight down as I went across. And I'm going to take just a damp brush with no paint on it, and I'm going to go ahead and blend that down here to make it nice and soft. Now the oil paints would do this blending a little bit easier, but I was able to do that with just a wet, clean brush. Let's make one more layer of trees, and this one's going to be slightly darker as they get closer to us they do appear a little darker and I added a little bit more red into there and very similar get this just right slightly darker than the ones slightly different color nice and rough here try to keep that mist in between Add the layer of depth, trying to create this illusion of depth. Use different parts of the brush, different colors pop up. You can even make this come up above here. So my mountains are still blue, not much different than the sky color. Leave the top edge of this rough to resemble little trees sticking up way in the background. And then again, we're going to pull that straight down to make it misty and blended. And to get rid of those brush marks, I'll take my slightly damp brush and just blend it out like this. And at the end here, we can just make this sort of fade away. We have big plans for this side of the paper over here. Okay. All right. So silly me forgot a step. I did watch that video, but realized something didn't look quite right as I started that. But you know what? We're okay because we don't make mistakes we make you got it happy accidents all right so under here we're going to go ahead and put in some trees and these trees are gonna, some are going to be closer than others and we just want the indication of trees along the back edge here
We're not worried about details. We just kind of want these points. We want them to be slightly irregular, some taller, some shorter. And it's okay if they go down like that, because we're going to make that into reflections. Sometimes you got to sharpen your brush up a little, possibly even turn it over, see what kind of marks we get here. And simple as this, a nice little row of trees. Now you want to be, like I said, you want to be random with the sizes. Leave some space in between. Don't try to draw. Let the brush make the marks for you. And we have an idea of little trees off into the distance. So far, so good. Now we're going to take our two inch brush. So, in the same color, a little bit lighter though, and we're going to pull straight down. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm creating a reflections of the trees and shoreline at the same time. So, my paper's a little wrinkled. I'm not sure if you can see that. But just as simple as that, we create this shoreline and some reflections of the trees straight down like this. Then for a little bravery, it doesn't always work as well with this brush as Bob Ross's, but the thing is, if you get little brush marks in your painting like this from the bristles, going back and forth, trying to soften those and blend them, that's okay because it can look like the horizontal marks on water. And water always goes horizontally, which is why that kind of works. Okay, another little trick we can do is take some white, a little bit of white, tone it down a tiny bit with the black. And we can add one more layer of depth, like so. And when you do this, it might look like tree trunks, the base of those trees going up. So with my flat chisel brush, we want to just go straight up like this and get the little indication of tree trunks. Oh, what a shame if I miss this step. Because that looks so cool, doesn't it? And this is pure Bob Ross technique. But just having those little vertical lines up like this really help those trees stand out. Okay, with the same brush, I'm going to go ahead and make a shoreline. Bob Ross did this with a knife. I'm really not comfortable with a knife, and I know that I can make a shoreline with my very flat chisel brush, like so by just going back and forth and using the sharp edge of that chisel knife, chisel edge on my brush, and I can make this appear like a shoreline along the background. All right, I think we're okay. And what this represents is an area where the waves might come and crash against the shore and you would see the white of the foam of the waves or the air and the water as it crashes against the shore. And that's what that sort of looks like. Okay, back to our fan brush. Quick little detour, rewind, and we're right back to our tree now. All right, so no harm done there. We got our tree, I got my black little bit of yellow in with the black 
We want this to be nice and dry. Let's give this guy a friend. Over here, and one more maybe over here. It's similar, very, very similar uh, brush, just slightly thinner. Seems to do a little bit more what I want here. Okay, so here we go for our tree. We're going to use Bob Ross's Z pattern. And for me, toughest part of this is getting started. Isn't that true with most things? Toughest part is getting started. First step. Once we go, we want to do this pattern like Bob Ross did, sort of like a Z. Make sure you're leaving some air in between. And you're not going straight lines. Big mistake I see new painters do is they make these look sort of like a ladder. They're very straight lines. Bob Ross literally goes back and forth in a Z, which makes it a little thicker in the middle and leaves you room on the edges to look like lights going through. We want these to look random and irregular. We don't want them to be like a ladder, straight like a ladder. Go over to this guy and go back and forth. Make it slightly bigger as you go down. Oops, a little wide, but you know what? That accent turns into a little taller tree. That works, it's okay. Random all the way down here. Quite all right, all the way down to the bottom. And guess what goes in here? This is where we make our island. What do you know? Same color, here goes our island. There's our island in the wilderness. What do you think? All right, so far so good. Not even gonna wash my brush yet. I'm just gonna go off to the side here Take some of my yellow, maybe just leave it up here. I want some yellow with that black makes this nice green color. Okay, so now I'm gonna add just a little layer of detail. Load up my brush with this green and just ever so slightly touch in some highlights. start to see some color as the light hits our tree. And this will make it stand out. It was kind of hard to see from with the black on the black, but hopefully you can see where this little color starts to give us some detail. And makes this tree come alive a little bit more. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that looks good. Especially where it gets dark down at the bottom and you can't really see. I like how this yellow helps that stand out. And we might as well do the same here. We've got some bushes here. We'll add a few layers of bushes and make our island right we want some bushes coming off the island here down around the base of the trees of course we do all right and lastly brighten it up a little more i'm going to add a tiny bit of white to the same paint that i have yellow i just noticed when light hits grass or pine needles they tend to look very yellow so one more layer just tiny bit brighter and look at that super nice 
We don't want the dots, but we definitely want to see these pine needles and we want to see the, where the light's hitting them. So I just found a nice spot on my brush there with some yellow on it. We're going to use that part of the brush and go ahead and make some parts of this tree really stand out. Super nice. Okay, and we're going to add it to our bushes here. Let's see them. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I'm digging it. Hey, what do you think? An island in the wilderness, what do you know? Now along the bottom, I'm going to go ahead use some white and I'm going to add a tiny bit of red and guess what happens when you add red to yellow and blue I think I heard someone say it you get a brown color so we just want a little bit of an earthy color so I'm not sure you can see what I'm doing here mixing all three primary colors here getting a brown and getting it into this, adding it to this little black that I have until I get a little earthy color. And we can sort of make a shoreline here along the bottom. Just use this little side brush, the side of this brush here. It's my shore. We're going to drag some of this tree down. Silly me, I forgot another step. We didn't make any reflections of our wonderful trees down here. Again, that's going to be okay though. Just some hints of color here is going to work for us. Just an idea that there's a tree there. Not even really much of a tree at all. I'm going to take my wet clean brush and draw this straight down again. Remember our reflections in the water go straight down. Totally learned that from Mr. Ross. And then we go this way to try to blend it. We just want that darkness in the water just to give us an idea that there is a shadow there. Okay? And try to blend that in like so fuzz it and blend it in. Let's see if we can, since I re-wetted the paper. Get some of this back in here. I think I lost a little of my detail. And this is definitely where oil paints would help. Part of the problem here is that the water is dried. So now I am kind of drawing in the water here, which just doesn't have the same effect. But some of the uh, paint has dried in the water down here. Uh, so it doesn't blend in like it should. So it's hard to get the shape of the trees and then kind of blend it out because our water is already dry. So anyways, no worries with this. Okay, we have, looks sort of like a shadow. I can live with it. If you can live with it, I'll live with it. Okay. All right, now back to our little shoreline here, back to our island. Remember what we did in the back? Put a little white edge on there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here to sort of make it look like the waves are breaking. There's some kind of shoreline here. A little contrast. And 
beautiful. Okay, there's our little island. All right. All right, we're gonna go over to the bigger trees now. Over here, I'm gonna try to make myself a big bushy tree. So I have some blue on my brush. I'm gonna mix that with yellow. A little bit of red. Some white. Some more blue. Getting a green over here. And black. Okay, we're gonna do a lot of this. Start out with very dark black for the background. All those other colors gave me kind of a brownish green color. And uh, hopefully this won't turn out too gray when it dries. These acrylic paints tend to dry down a little bit. So they look brighter when they're wet and as they dry, they get darker, okay? Now, this is going to be a bushy kind of tree, a little different than the pine trees that we've done. So, I have discovered that trees tend to grow their leaves in clumps. So, I am trying to make nice clumps of leaves. And we need some nice black, black in there so that when we put the whites on there, they show up. So with my big brush here, I'm adding different clumps of leaves, mostly a black base. We're trying to get the idea that there's different clumps. Of leaves to make up our big tree. Okay, and guess what? This is all gonna end up being an island. This is gonna be ground here. So that's gonna be very cool when we get that done. While well, I got all this blackness on the brush, I might as well do this. I gotta work fast though at this point. All right, so now the other thing I've done is give myself some green that I wanted to start doing some highlights. Now I know most of our light is coming from this area, but just for the sake of painting, I'm gonna try to make one side of my tree slightly lighter than the others, just to make this look more 3D or modeled. So I've decided that over here is where the right side, I'm gonna have a lighter area to my trees. And the left side of my clumps are gonna remain a little bit, whoops, that's very light, isn't it? But wow, that's cool. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go with that. I like it. Happy accident right there if I ever saw one. And there's a big, beautiful, bushy tree. Okay, and a lot of that is okay. Because guess what's coming next? another big tree and we're gonna go crazy with this guy this is a monster and he's in front of this guy those colors are blending which is kind of cool and then believe it or not I think I'm gonna add another guy over there and these and guess what happens here it's the bottom there you got it here comes my Z tree. I'm gonna try this brush. Kind of fights with me a little bit. But gosh, I wonder if I close my eyes, what would happen if this 
because it's almost like the more random you go, the better this comes out. And we're going to do our little Z trick, remember? And I've already got greens and yellows from my tree over here mixing in with this, so it's kind of all done for me. But look at that. I can live with that guy. Nice big old pine tree. And his friend. And we're going to go all the way to the ground. It's important that you keep this guy going all the way down to the bottom. And here goes this guy. That looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? But you know what? It's going to work out. My experience tells me just keep going and it's going to work out. Add a little water to my brush. I could have live streamed this maybe, but I do want you all to have a chance to see it. So I did tape this, although I'm trying to do it as few takes as I can. And we're going to go with our yellow white color. Brush a little wet, so you know what you have to do? You got it. Beat the devil out of it. All right. We're going to go with our white, yellow color. Give this guy some highlights here. Try to make him stand out from the tree behind it. But add some areas of light. Got to move the brush ever so slightly to get it so it doesn't look like dots. I don't want my brush to look like dots of color. We want it to look like those bristles, the ferrules, but without the dots. And especially as it gets down dark here, you can see where that helps it stand out. Yeah, these fan brushes are tricky. They're not magic. And you know, I used to not even use a fan brush for these trees. I used to just use that chisel tip brush because you can control it a lot more. But I do realize that some of this stuff that seems kind of out of control can actually work pretty well too. So we're gonna just go ahead and add some bushes here. I have my brush. Can make some of these bushes stick up. Add some bigger areas here for bushes kind of in the background. We can be bold with color here. I'm going to even add some red. And that's going to look like a nice bush over here. And some flowers. We need some variety, I feel like, some different color uh, there. All right. Wunderbar. So far, so good. Right, we're getting down to the, uh, the end here. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush. I had a brush with some brownish color on there. I think it was this one. It's got them all on there anyway. We're going to go back down here to our brown. I'm going to make myself a little path. Kind of a warm brown. So I mixed my red and yellow with a little bit of black. It's going to keep that warm and I'm going to go ahead from over here. We're going to just make some kind of rockish. It's 
It's going to softly resemble a little path. A little more paint. Yellow and red. With the black. And we get kind of a tannish brown. And I'm going to go just about like this. So I do sort of want a line. But then I want the line to sort of drop off. Give it a little dimension. Makes it look a little more 3D when you sort of twist the brush. And this is going to end up being kind of a path that comes down into here. Okay, so I have bushes. Conceivably, you can see some bushes and land back here. Go back with this guy and get some of my greenish black and I can just add where exactly those bushes might end there and now we're going to go ahead and paint some bushes full-on bushes right in front of those right in front of our path so you just can see through that the tiniest little bit so there's a nice bush there most of this is on tape. Our tape is down there. We're going to end up peeling it off. So we're going to try to get some bushes here in front before we call it a day. Back to my yellow and white. Make some highlights here for my bushes. Oh, there we go. Nice bright colors. Of bushes up in front. Off the tape a little. Put some flowers in there. Let's get some nice flowers. What do you think? A little red, maybe some berries on this bush or flowers. Just a dab of color. And, uh, I think we're just about done with this guy. And this stuff doesn't really matter. You're going to see that I'm going to peel that tape off. Now, Mr. Ross signed his name with paint. Mr. Booth has a better trick that sometimes I use. And because this is all wet, I think that I can take the end of my brush and scratch my name right through the paint just with the end of the brush. So I've kind of signed that guy and I uh, think I'm done. What do you say? When we peel the tape off, we'll see this nice clean edge. Very nice. And you see what I mean? About how that kind of frames it for us. And when we do this, you pull it away from your painting. I'll keep the tape on the top. And we have a finished painting. I don't know. Not bad. All right. Well, I do sincerely hope that you enjoyed the video and you were inspired to paint a painting of your own. Uh, again, for the assignment, you don't need fancy paints. You don't need these fancy brushes. You can use crayons. You could use markers. Any art material that you have. Color would certainly be nice. And do something that's maybe inspired you uh, from this video or from my friend Bob Ross. Until next time, I do want to say I miss you all. I wish we could be doing this in person. I hope that you're all doing well. Uh, bless you all. And take care.